Have you ever wondered how much force it takes to pull your brake levers? Like quantitatively, how much force does it actually require to engage your brakes? Well, it should come as no surprise to you, but I have. And in this video, we're going to quantitatively measure the amount of force required to pull every brake on every bike in this garage. And I have a feeling we just might learn something today. Okay, so what I have here is my scale that I use to weigh all my bike parts. And I've 3D printed a little proxy for a finger, which I'm gonna to use to actually push all the brake levers. So basically, if I just push this down, I can measure the amount of force required to depress each brake lever. Now, for anybody who's going to criticize the pseudoscience here, yes, this is basically just a digital kitchen scale, and the core technology that makes this work is just a load cell that's mounted underneath inside of the housing. Now, that means that the orientation actually matters, and so if I tilt the scale to a different angle, you can see that I get a non-zero measurement. So what that means is that this is, of course, not perfect science, and I've got to do my best to keep the scale pretty much vertical, and then I can zero it out right before I depress each brake lever. Real science is happening. All right, so up first we have the Hanzo. These are Shimano Dior brakes. So the way I'm gonna do this, since all the brake levers are kind of aligned at different angles, I'm gonna align the scale square to the brake lever every time, and then I'm just gonna zero it out before I take each measurement. And then I'm gonna push on the brake lever where I normally pull with one finger. And what I'm doing is I'm taking the measurement just before the pads contact the rotor, which will give us a good indication of the actual force required to just pull the lever. 13.5 ounces for the rear, and then for the front, 12.2. And this is the high tower, and these are supposed to be a slightly nicer brake than the Dior. These are the SLX models, so let's take note of those. Oh, interesting. 12.9. And for the front, 11.6%. For a while, I was thinking the Dior levers actually felt better. Technically, the data is saying that these are lighter levers. I don't know. What else do we got? You know what I'm actually kind of curious about? It's my son's bike. This is the giant STP uh, something. The one with the front shock. And these levers are like ridiculously light. Zero this out. 12.6 for the rear. For the front, not the same front and rear. I'll call it 12.4. All right, <clears throat> what else we got? How about a V-brake? This is the uh, Specialized Hard Rock Resto Mod. The rear brake is not linked up because the back wheel is not bolted on, but I can still get the front brake here. Now these brakes I got uh, I think they're like $20 for the pair. I feel like I should like question the integrity of the brake at that price point, but they've actually held up pretty well. So this is uh, obviously a mechanical brake. Now these are a bit harder to pull, I can feel. Aha, 23.2 ounces. So yeah, significantly more force required to pull the V-brake. And I guess that's not a big surprise, but quite literally twice as much force to pull the V-brake lever than any of the other uh, disc brake levers. Interesting, huh? So this is the dirt jump bike that I just picked up. This is a SRAM level T. I'm gonna hypothesize here. Based on my findings so far, this feels to me like 16 and a half ounces. The scientific method, people. Gotta have a hypothesis. 18.6. I guess that doesn't surprise me. This does feel a little bit harder to pull than the uh, SLX and the Dior brakes, but not as hard as a V brake, so there you go. All right, so how about onto some drop bar brakes? This is the Blackheart Aluminum All Road. This is GRX 600. For the drop bar bikes, I'm gonna do two measurements for each side. So I'm gonna take measurements sort of where my fingers naturally land while I'm in the hoods, and then in the drops, I'll kind of pull in the, in the dip here of the lever. Okay, let's go hoods first for the rear. A 46 and change, so we'll call it 46.2. For the, uh, we'll call it the drop, only takes 15.6 ounces. Wow, okay, so that's like a third of the amount of force, which I'm not sure if that makes sense because shouldn't it be proportional to the length? I'm not sure. I gotta think about that for a minute, but uh, I mean, the data is the data, right? So I measured 46.2 up here. Maybe that is about a third of the way down, and then only 15.6 down here. Now for the left side, 45 and a little bit, 15.8. I'm actually measuring that it's about three times harder you have to pull when you're in the hoods uh, versus down here in the drops. Interesting. So this is SRAM Arrival on the new Polygon Bend R9X. Got a review in the works for this one as well. So this is rear brake from the hoods, 48 and a half. Pretty light, 17.9. 47 and change, 
just a touch more than the GRX. But they feel okay. Numbers don't lie, right? This, the Ritchie Outback, for which I'm running the GroTac Equal Mechanical Disc Brakes. Now these brakes feel awesome, and they're paired to these Shimano, these older uh, R7000 levers, but the braking just, it feels so good on this bike. Like this is the one bike that kind of makes me question whether uh, hydraulic brakes are necessary, because the power is so good, the lever feel is really nice, decent modulation as well. What? 35 and a half for the rear? No, that can't be. That's like a third less than the hydraulic. I don't know, I think I believe it though. It's really light action. Oh my goodness, called 15.1. That is lower across the board than both drop bar hydraulic brakes. Just do the front for good measure. 35.1, just a touch less than the rear, which I guess makes sense because this is a cable brake. And then down here in the drops, 14.8. That's crazy, that's, that's probably why I like these brakes so much. Like the lever action is so light. Wow, okay, learning stuff today. Now, there's actually one other brake that I want to test, and this is kind of the bike that made me want to quantify brake lever force uh, in the first place. Now, maybe no surprise to you if you watch the channel regularly, but before I send back this review bike, I just have to know how hard it is to push these levers on the state 6061 all road that I've been test riding. I've got to admit that the brakes are one of the problem areas that I sort of stated in the review. And I know that I'm not the only one that shares that point of view. I mean, these levers are pretty hard to pull. It is a mechanically actuated hydraulic disc brake, but there's just a lot of tension in the system. And I'm not sure if that's coming from the lever or the caliper or what, but I did have a pretty hard time pulling on these levers. Error. Uh, the scale won't measure how much force it takes. So this scale measures up to three kilograms of force, which that's 105 ounces. From the drop, about 42.5. Essentially three times the amount of force required across the board for all the drop bar bikes to pull the brake to the rotor in the, in the drop. Okay, error again. Wow, that's high, man. Okay, called 48 and a half ounces. That is a lot. That is probably the biggest reason I had a hard time riding this bike. All right, let's get this cleaned up and look at some of the numbers. Let's go with flat bar first. Really no surprise here that the mechanically actuated V-brakes, 23.4 ounces to pull the brake lever. And again, that's just a front because the rear isn't hooked up right now. And then the uh, dirt jumper that I picked up recently. So those are SRAM Level T hydraulic disc brakes. That required 18.6 ounces, considerably lighter than a V-brake. However, the Shimano Dior brakes, which are on the Kona Hanzo, front brake force of 12.2 ounces, rear of 13.5. So less still than the SRAM Level T. Now, very similarly, the Santa Cruz Hightower, which has Shimano SLX hydraulic disc brakes, 11.6 ounces for the front, 12.9 ounces for the rear. So actually marginally lighter lever action than the Dior, but honestly that could just be in the noise because those are very similar uh, brake lever housings. The calipers are very similar. It is interesting that it's consistently lower for the SLX and the Dior, but again, not by very much. And then again, just for fun, my son's giant STP 20 inch mountain bike, which has pretty run of the mill Tektro hydraulic disc brakes. Somehow they managed to get the brake force down to 12.4 and 12.6 ounces respectively front to rear, which is one of the reasons I think that he really likes this bike. It's just because the brakes are so easy to squeeze. He has a lot more confidence when we're descending chunkier terrain. And again, I think the brakes have a lot to do with that confidence. Okay, so then let's move into the drop bar stuff. A really big surprise here, starting with the Outback, the GroTac Equal disc brakes paired to the Shimano R7000 levers, 35 and a half ounces for the rear brake from the hoods, 15.1 ounces for the rear brake from the drops, and 35.1 ounces from the hoods on the front brake, 14.8 ounces from the drops. So this is the lowest amount of brake force of all of the drop bar brake levers that I measured, including the bikes with hydraulic brakes, which to me is wild, really big surprise there. Now moving to the Blackheart All Road, which is running GRX 600, 46.2 from the hoods on the rear, 15.6 ounces from the drops for the rear, 45.3 ounces from the hoods in the front brake, 
and 15.8 ounces from the drops on the front brake. Now moving to the Polygon Bend R9X, that's running SRAM rival hydraulic disc brakes, 48.5 ounces from the hoods on the rear brake, 17.9 ounces from the drops on the rear brake. And then for the front brake, we have 47.2 ounces and 18.5 ounces respectively for braking from the hoods and from the drops. Okay, then again, the reason I kind of wanted to do this study in the first place is to look at the state brakes. For both cases, front and rear, from the hoods, we require 100 plus ounces of force just to get the pads to engage the rotors. And then I suppose things get a little bit better when you're braking from the drops, 42.5 ounces in the rear and 48.5 for the front brake. But again, for me, that's still too much brake force required to feel confident when descending, especially through chunkier terrain. All right, so there you go. There's some bike science. Uh, admittedly, this is pseudoscience. It's just meant to give you a sense for quantifying the amount of brake force required on a number of different bikes. So are there any takeaways from this study? Well, it's really no surprise to me, but it was really interesting to see that the brakes with the lowest amount of force required to engage them are my favorite brakes across the board. Uh, specifically for the Shimano Dior and the SLX brakes on my mountain bikes, those are by far my favorite brakes and that's when comparing to mechanical V brakes as well as some of the SRAM offerings. And then the biggest surprise for me is that the drop bar brakes that required the least amount of braking force were the mechanical brakes, the Grotac Equal brakes that I've got on the Outback. It turns out that they're easier to pull than some hydraulic drop bar disc brakes. But anyways, there you go. It seems that for me personally, I tend to prefer brakes with really light lever action. I think personally, it just gives me a lot more confidence when descending because I can focus all of my hand strength on modulating the brakes rather than just engaging them in the first place. If you have any questions, just drop them down in the comments. If you have any feedback on our scientific method here, maybe just uh, keep those to yourself. No, I'm just kidding. Feel free to drop any comments or questions down below. Now, I just want you to know that I recognize that this is not perfect science, so maybe just keep that in mind is all I ask. Thanks again for watching and thanks for subscribing to the channel. If you haven't already, I'll see you next time.